On this episode of RC Kicks, we're taking a look at a very rare buggy that I've been trying to hunt down for the best part of a year. It's a Schumacher Cat. Yeah, not one of these. These are two a penny and super easy to find. Holy moly, how much? I'm talking about a vintage short wheelbase version and not a conversion from one of these, an actual vintage buggy. Roll the VT, Charlie. Well, well done. This buggy was made in 1986, not the 1940s. Should we try that again? So before we dive into the gorgeous short wheelbase, just look at this. It's bursting at the seams. It is full of option parts. Yes, there is more than I can actually cram into the box. So this will be coming soon. We'll do a full option XLS build on the show. I know, I know it's been a while, but uh, I'm getting close to being able to build it now. Plus, I'm kind of itching to build it. It's going to be a pain, but it's going to be absolutely beautiful with every option that's possible. Right, anyway. Let's dive back into the short wheelbase and yes, it is absolutely beautiful. 1986 is when we first got to see this, um, designed by Cecil Schumacher. I looked up the prices and we're all complaining that prices are ridiculously high right now. But back in the day, 1986, this kit was £175. Put that into a calculator of what it would be today, and you're looking at £422. So when you're buying your kits these days, they're probably no more cheaper or expensive than they were back in the day. Now, what's so special about this, I hear you cry. Why would I get one of these when you can get the XLS? Well, the XLSs are quite expensive, but anyway, hear me out. Now, it's not just the case of the wheelbase was changed. So you can't really take an XLS and make it into a short wheelbase without putting lots of of effort into it. Granted you can just change the bottom and top chassis and then change the belt and it will look kind of like one but if you put it up against a real one you will notice there's a lot of differences. So I've made a list all here. So the, the long wheelbase one, the XLS, has a wheelbase of 281 millimeters where this dumpy little fella is only 250 millimeters. So why am I so giddy about this? Well this car is insanely fast for that 1%. If you're one of the best drivers in the country, you can get speeds out of this thing like you wouldn't believe back in the day. And that was the problem, is unless you were that good, for everybody else, it was a handful, a total handful, because it's such a short wheelbase, it's so twitchy. Also, from what I've read, the tuning of this was a real challenge because every little change you did had a massive impact. So you were constantly chasing setups. So that's kind of where the XLS came from. Now, I am no Schumacher vintage expert. Back in the day, my friend was driving one of these and I was driving a grasshopper. So that's kind of where I was. And I was, uh, how old was I in 1986? 74, 84, 84, I was 12. So as you can see, this was well out of my range when I was 12 years old, so that's why I had a grasshopper. And my friend had one of these in camel, camel yellow it was, so maybe I'll do a homage to that. I have no idea what happened to him, but he was obviously a lot older than me at the time. But a uh, beautiful car, and that's kind of why I really wanted to get one. And I did see one for the first time since back in the day at the RC Kicks meet. And yes, as soon as I saw that, it was how I remember it, the dumpiness and the stockiness of it, and I just loved it. And this one came up, so I jumped on it, and I was lucky enough to get it at a reasonable price, as these are so hard to find 
when they come up, people grab them instantly and people have paid over a thousand pound for these. And luckily I didn't pay that. But it's really difficult to set the prices on these because they're so rare. When they come up, obviously this condition is everything and being that these were driven round tracks, there's not many of them left. Now you can take bits off the XLS and put it onto these. So again, it waters them down a little bit, but this one is exactly as it was back in the day. There is no XLS parts on this at all. And I've got a list of all the things that are different. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll just change the top deck and the bottom deck and I've got myself a short wheelbase. Yeah, it's a lot more work than you think. So some of the things that are different are the front bumper is obviously different. <laughs> this looks like it was homemade, but that's actually how it was. Then it's got a, a pulley instead of a front diff, a one way front shaft, slipper top shaft, narrow rear track setup. So the actual uh, track is thinner than an XLS. So if you want to change things, things like the Rear drive shafts uh, are actually shorter so if you use XLS ones it doesn't work either. The short wheelbase doesn't have turnbuckles, the short wheelbase has a rear stabilizer bar, yes I know you can get one for the XLS but this came with it. Short wheelbase has a zero degree front shock mount, uh, rear wing is mounted to the top shock tower whereas the XLS it's to the bottom. Also the top shock tower is completely different as well and the short wheelbase only has one chassis post whereas in the XLS it has two. So there's quite a lot of difference. So yes, you can kind of make an XLS look like one, but if you want to get all these extra bits and pieces to, to make it uh, work, then you're better off just trying to find a short wheelbase one. Uh, also, all the rear diff is different as well. The way it mounts to the actual bottom tray, all the mount holes are different. So it is a lot of work if you're gonna try and convert one. Not saying it's impossible, but you just have to end up buying quite a lot of bits and pieces. So in this deal, not only did I get the car, but I also got this. A, I've been after one of these for quite a while as well. This is a Demon Power Modified Triple Wind Motor, which is period correct for this one. Now, if anybody knows, unfortunately, Nick passed away, so all the prices of the Demon Motors have gone up quite a lot. And to find one in good condition like this is difficult as well. So it's nice to have one, especially as I had one of these in my Falcon. So um, whether I'll put it in the Falcon or put it in this, I honestly don't know. I think it belongs in this, really. Now I looked up these as well, and I can't tell if it's a 20 turn, 17 turn or 16 turn. So I'm not sure. I would have thought a 20 or 17 turn. I don't think it's the 16. Um, these back in the day were £25, which works out to be £60 today. And you can pick these up for about £60 to £80 now. So uh, they were just as expensive back then, even though they're vintage today. As well as something that was really cool, I got this as well. Yes, it looks out of the dark, dark ages, but this is a Demon Pro King electronic speed controller. Now, Jamie Booth used one of these back in the day and I looked up these as well. And this one is a more upgraded one. It's got an eight special power FETs and it was 60 pound. Also, I got a vintage servo for Taba S131 servo. So yes, it's a little bit tatty looking, but that's pretty much all vintage correct for this car. So should I put it in here? So I'm super chuffed to have one in the collection. Now it's done out as the original box art. This is not an original body. This is an aftermarket body and wing. The lower uh, bottom tray, that is an original one, but it's starting to show its age a little bit. So I have got a replacement for that, which I'll do again. But apart from that, it's all original, just how it should be. And it's in beautiful condition. So it's gonna go on the shelf and join my collection. I'm super chuffed to finally get this one. So a massive thanks for him selling it because they just don't come up that much. Anyway, thanks so much. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification because there's plenty more to come.